Welcome everyone to the first webinar of the Diligent Webinar Series. And my name is Kate Ellis and I'll be your joint host today. Just a little bit about myself. I run the marketing here for Diligent across Australia and New Zealand. Diligent provides secure collaboration tools for boards, leadership teams and is trusted by over 140,000 board members and executives worldwide. Now we've designed a series of webinar topics over the coming months to cover areas of your professional development. In today's session, we've brought together Patrick and myself, who runs the Perth office. Now, before I pass you over to Patrick, I'll just run through a couple of things. The webinar will run for about 30 minutes today, which will consist of about a 25-minute presentation and five minutes Q&A at the end. Now, if you have any questions, please do type them into the chat box on the right of your screen, and Patrick and I will address them at the end of the presentation. Our host today, as mentioned before, is Patrick Brown Cooper, who looks after business development for WA, Northern Territory, Tasmania, and South Australia. So let's get started. Over to you, Patrick. Thanks so much, Kate, and look, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, this morning, as Kate mentioned, we're going to have a, a chat about how we use our solution to, to really drive efficiencies in the preparation and distribution of our board's materials. Um, but a little bit about us before we jump in. We were founded in 2001. We've got our global offices, um, and we we're pretty much have a pretty significant presence around the globe um, with over 140,000 directors using our solution to review and prepare for their meetings on a daily basis. Here in Australia, we've got over 500 clients that's growing every week. And uh, we work with organisations across the gamut. We work with organisations such as your Qantas, Telstra, um, federal government departments such as the Federal Department for Education and the Federal Department for Trade and Immigration, all who've selected us on the basis of kind of three of our major principles being uh, obviously the security of the documentation that we provide for them with their most sensitive board materials, uh, the ease of use for directors in preparing for those meetings, and also a successful implementation that we work with. So we work with organisations on a personal level, um, account managers throughout the nation, uh, make sure that those uh, those preparations and executions of the, of the um, success plans for implementing diligent boards through an organization's board and administrative teams runs really seamlessly. You know, and that really does drive out our client retention rate. We only have 12-month contracts for our clients, but our clients stick with us, and we're really proud to hang our hat on that 99% retention rate. Our clients all have the opportunity to, um, to move on after 12 months. But, but we've got a great client retention rate and that's based on, on the way that we support and the way that we work with the organisations that we support. I've got here on the slide a typical process. Um, now this is all that we do as a business. So we really focus on making sure that the, the solution is bespoke, it's fit for purpose, it's easy for you guys internally to, to collate all your documents and it's also really straightforward and simple for the board um, to create efficiencies for both parties in preparing and reviewing the board meeting material. And you can see there on the left that, that typically what your administrator would receive from various departments within an organisation may come through to them in various different formats, Excel, Word, PDFs, all different kinds of formats. And I can tell from some of the, um, the, the questionnaires that we sent out before the meeting that the majority of you are, are receiving that documentation in a PDF format and then you're emailing it out to the board or providing it to the board in, in a Dropbox or, or another um, cloud-based server where, where you maybe don't have the security and the ease of use functionality that, that, that a board portal system like Diligent provides. And then what, the, what, the, what we're doing from an administrative perspective is we're collating all those different materials into our board pack and preparing that for the board, which is exactly what we're going to do here today. We're going to run you through that solution, show you how it works, and then we're also going to have a quick look at, um, at how that looks from a board director's perspective, how they go about preparing for the meeting, um, but we'll also focus more on the board member's experience in some of our webinars that are coming up in the next few weeks. So um, if we haven't covered everything that you want to see today, um, never fear, we'll have another one of these um, in the next few weeks where we're going to have a little bit more of a focus on, on what the board itself, um, what their experiences are like to make sure that you guys get a full understanding of both ends of the spectrum. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a book quickly, we're going to control the distribution, we're going to make the information very easy to find and to navigate, we're going to review and, and have a look at our approval processes, and we're going to share updates and interact 
um, with the board and within the board uh, in a very seamless fashion. Um, so let's jump into the platform and, and see what we're talking about here today. Um, I've just got to get my Diligent Boards app up. So this is what you as an administrator will have sitting on your desktop. I'll just make this a little bit larger so that we can all see what, what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to minimise this screen over here. Um, just bear with me while I get this set up so that it's uh, nice and clear for your wall. So I can see here I've logged into my Diligent Boards um, app. This is what we call a one-click app that sits on your PC and allows you to create the documents within the secure confines of, of the Diligent Board software. This is proprietary software which is bespoke and built just for this purpose. This is also what a director would see if they were going to review their papers on a, um, on a PC. We have a few directors who do that, although the majority nowadays are using a, uh, a web uh, sorry, a tablet device, either a Surface Pro or, or a, uh, one of the other um, devices out there, maybe an iPad. Um, that's probably the most common one that, that, that is used out there in the market today. As an administrator, I've got some additional privileges that obviously the board wouldn't have. I've got access to the full admin site. Um, I, can fit, I can email my fellow administration team within um, uh, organisations of different sizes. There's multiple individuals working on it. And that's also how we'll track our approval process um, once the documents are, are, are working through their approval processes and, and ready to go. I can also email the board of directors, which is how we communicate with the board. The last thing we want to be doing is flooding the directors with notifications and emails all the time. So at Diligent, we put you guys in charge of that process, making sure that you are communicating the wood with the board to make sure that it's effective and it's efficient and that they're not getting information uh, arbitrarily or all the time that, that, that you're not aware of. So you guys are in complete control of that. Here you can see I've got my current board documentation. Uh, so this is what's available for the board in their current area. They also obviously have an archived area where all of their previous board back material will be. And uh, there's a resources and calendars um, uh, contact areas which we'll also have a look at when we have a look at the, the director's interface itself. So I've got my current books, archive, a calendar, I've got the contact details so the directors can keep in touch with one another and the resources centre which is where you can populate all your policies and procedures, um, the board constitution, all of that sort of information be, can be kept within there. So let's go ahead and uh, skip to the chase. We're all here to see exactly how we're going to build board tack within uh, that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to come into this area here and I'm going to right click and create a book from scratch. If your board packs are pretty much the same month on month, you can copy the structure that you previously used uh, a previous month and that will bring through those, uh, those file divider systems that you've set up previously. But if we're going to do it from scratch, I'm going to show you how we use our bulk upload feature in order to do it in a very efficient manner. I'm going to choose uh, our meeting to be on the 15th of September and I'll call it our September 15 board meeting. I'll click OK and whilst it's getting our, our, our um, area ready to be to, for, the, for the pack to be built within, I'll just open up this folder here. So this is typically um, what we would have from within the organisation of the kinds of documents that we need to create um, our, our board papers. Um, what we've got here is the agenda, we've got the approval of minutes from the last meeting, our finance department has sent through a bunch of different documents in different formats, we've got some Excel spreadsheets, some PowerPoint presentations, perhaps some PDFs. I've got folders and subfolders that I would like to be represented as point one or point 0.4 or point 0.2 in our folder structure. And I'm going to now show you how Diligent's going to pick up on that folder structure and automatically create the tabs for you. Okay, so here it is. I've got all of those documents in that folder. Simply drag and drop them all in. Doesn't matter whether you're using Trim or um, uh, SharePoint, another document management system, Diligent uh, will automatically work with all of those drag and drop scenarios. I can come in, I'll do a few things to tidy up, such as create a tab for every folder. I'm also going to get diligent to pick up on any Excel spreadsheets that I've got and make sure it brings in just the data sheets, not sheets with, with empty cells in there. Also, I'm going to order my files numerically, but I'm going to do a little bit of future proofing 
um, and remove those leading numbers from the file names. Quite often the agenda will change closer to the time of the meeting and I don't want to have to go through and renumber all of my documents just because the agenda's changed. If I do that, keeps it flexible, bit of future-proofing on my own behalf. Whilst that's importing, it's going to bring all the documents through, but it's keeping them in their native format. So if they were prepared in a Word format or Excel or PDF, it's keeping them in whatever format they were prepared in, thusly allowing me that flexibility to change them and amend them, amend them as time goes on. Um, when we're using Diligent, we don't want to create one big PDF. We want it to be a flexible um, document, uh, which will enable me to manage any changes that come through. Having said that, there's only ever one version of the document. Now, from a governance perspective, that's obviously an, an essential feature of, of the tool in that we're only ever creating one version of our document um, and any annotations or any amendments that we make to that one document that we prepare, we have a full audit trail so that we can provide that. If, if auditors do ask for it, we can see who's done what, who's done when, um, and that way we're, we're keeping our governance um, principles intact and, and keeping it keeping everything as it should be. Um, once my documents are through, I can come in here and start to do my review process. Now, conflicts of interest and declarations do come up from time to time. Um, Diligent provides you with, with a very simple way of managing these. For an example, I've got here the performance review for our CEO. I'm going to click on more. And I can see it's a Word document, so if I wanted to edit it, I could edit it within the Word platform. Um, but I'm going to click here on Viewers, and I'm going to select which viewers can use it. So I'm going to specify that everybody except for our CEO, Abby, is going to have access to this document. Now, from a logistical perspective, it's very important that we understand that Abby will see that as an agenda item but she will not see the contents of that document. Her pagination, so the way she navigates her way through the document, will still remain the same as everyone else's. So her page 35 will still stay the same as everyone else's 35. She just will not see pages 28 and 29 because of the, the uh, conflict of interest that we've controlled here, we've hidden that document from her. Um, Within the meeting, that's quite often a frustration with different individuals having different versions and not being able to, to navigate to the same point. If I come in here and have a look at the history of the document, it's going to show me exactly what I've done to that document and when. So that's available to you guys at any time. I can see that it's not yet approved, it's current, it's an admin folder. Um, I can come in and see who's done what, where and when. So I've got that history there at my disposal. If I come back up to the top, I'm going to collapse all the tabs at the moment just so that you can see what I would do if the agenda changed. Let's say um, that the operations report uh, has become a, a critical agenda item and has been moved right up to the top of the meeting. Simply drag and drop it, that's where it'll go. I'm going to come back into my agenda tab. I'm going to edit this tab itself because the, the agenda tab at the moment has a number on it. Those numbers are reflective of the agenda item. And because the agenda is not an, an, an agenda item in its own right, I'm going to make it a non-number tab. That way, I've got my approval of minutes as my first agenda item, my operations report as my second. I'm just going to move that back because it doesn't actually represent the way we had it set up in our agenda. So we want it to look good. Um, another function that's really quite useful when you're using Diligent is if you're Quite often we find the organisations that we work with that uh, they're holding back on getting their board pack through to the board because there may be one particular department, quite often finance, especially at the end of the year, um, uh, are running late on getting their documents ready. I can actually create a placeholder tab and I'm going to call this the finance, um, finance report placeholder. This way I have created a place for that report to come into, but because it's not ready yet, I'm going to add a, just a placeholder document in there. That way the board are kept informed of where we're up to in the preparation of their materials. I've just got that document in a slightly, slightly odd position here. Um, the board are kept aware of where we're up to with their materials. I'm just going to drag and drop this one in. Uh, 
that's a slight frustration that we've got there. We'll just use another document here. We'll drag and drop it in. And now there's a document there as a placeholder document, um, just letting the board know that, that we're waiting for, waiting for the full report to come in. I can add a little note to that to make sure that I've made it clear for the board as to what my intentions are, but I've not had to hold the whole board report back from the board in order to, um, to get it ready for them. Now, approvals. I'm going to click in and view the document. This will provide me with the opportunity to have a look at it and the way that it's laid out for the board. This is also where I can add any hyperlinks, which is a navigation tool that the board can use to navigate their way through the document. On the left-hand side here, you'll see all our documents are showing up in red. That means they're not yet approved. As I go through, have a look, make sure I'm happy with it, add my uh, hyperlinks. I've got the operations report here. Create a quick link there to our operations report. Create that link. As I come in and have a look, I can make sure that I'm happy with the layout of that document and I'll approve it. Once I've approved it, that document's going to change from red to black. That way my colleagues, when they log in at a glance, can see what's red is not yet approved, what's black is approved. If you guys um, have a, have a multi-tiered approval process, we can actually add another layer in there so that you can change it from red to blue and then from blue to black as your final approval process. Um, it allows you to be flexible with, with the approval processes that, that you run, whether it goes through to the chairman or whether it goes through the, to the CEO or the managing director to approve. For our purposes here today, I'm going to come in and approve and final the entire book. I obviously would have gone through and uh, uh, added my hyperlinks to all of those different documents, but we want to get this done, close this one, change it from hidden to current and our board pack is now ready to go. I'll come back into my iPad screen now. And I'm going to refresh my document for any updates. Using my fingerprint ID on my iPad, I can log straight in. And it's checking for any updates and I can see that there's our September 15 board meeting. The beauty of Diligent is it keeps the documents light. So as they come through, it's not going to take 15 minutes for that to download. It's going to be ready in an instant and I can already start to navigate my way through the document. Those folders that, and subfolders that I set up are represented thusly. I've got my hyperlink for my operations report, which will take me straight to it. And if I'm a director, I want to make some annotations within this document. I simply click on my annotations tool zoom into where I want to make my point, choose a pen colour, keep it simple and I can make that a uh, note here. I can say it, this is down on last year. Why is that? Bookmark that document, zoom out and I'm ready to go and start revising the rest of the document itself. So we've gone through a pretty straightforward approach to, to creating the pack. I'm not sure Kate, have we had any questions come through of particular issues that we'd like to have a look at? I've got a few other things that I've got time to demonstrate, but it just depends on the, on the time that we've got. Yeah, we've got a few questions coming through. So um, I'm sure some of them might cover what you might want to co cover yourself. So let's, let's have a look at them. So question here around, can, which type of documents can we upload? 
such so as I think we, Suite. Yeah, so basically we work with organisations of all different varieties and, and obviously we work with uh, local councils um, uh, all over the country. We work with some very large councils like the City of Sydney and then some smaller councils like uh, the Regional Council for Ipswich and, and, the, and the City of Swan over in Western Australia. Um, and, and quite often their documents will have DA plans, um, approvals, um, various different formatting types, all of which are supported by our solution. This document here is created from all of these different documents represented in this folder. So I've got Excel, PowerPoints, and they all came through via the one bulk import process. Um, so it's a very seamless way to work with multiple different platforms and, and all of the documents that, that, that you need to bring through are supported thusly. Thanks Patrick. Another one here is how long before should directors receive their board papers? Yeah, so typically what our board packs um, are provided through the directors a week beforehand. Um, sometimes uh, in not such a quick turnaround because uh, they may be holding back for um, those particular reports that they're waiting for, which is a benefit of using that placeholder documentation process that we went through. Another thing that, that often occurs for your board is that uh, you might have changes to a document. Now, if I come in here and I've got my Oh, where am I? I've got my operations, I've got the financials. Let's use the, um, the global numbers report here. So the original document looks like this. This is my original document. Now, there's been some changes to it, but the changes are just to the numbers. So the night changes are just to Italy and Hong Kong. What I'm able to do using our system is update that document for the board. So I'm going to replace that document and I'm going to find it on my desktop. I've got my revised Q2 regions performance. I'm going to use that, I'm going to mark it as a revised document but retain my notes and annotations. So hypothetically this document's been with the board for a week now um, and it's just before the meeting, we've had some changes to Italy and Hong Kong and I want to make sure that the board are kept abreast of the changes that we've made. Because the layout of that document has remained the same, I can actually remove the original document upload the new one, but I'm keeping the director's notes in place. So I'm retaining the notes and annotations to make sure that our director's notes are not lost. The last thing we would want to do is, is remove our director's notes. So I'm uploading that document. The director's notes are sitting like a skin on, on the new document. And because the formatting of that document, the layout of the page hasn't changed, I'm able to just slide that new document under their notes. If I was using a different document and, and, and the layout of the page had vastly changed, I would definitely not want to delete that document because I want to keep my director's notes. I want to add a new document and provide the same sort of note that gives them context. That way they can, be, uh, they can keep their notes and, and make sure that everything's in the right place. Here I've just got to come through, that's going to show up in red, so I've just got to change it to black so that it's current. And then what I would do is I would email the board quickly and say, look, please refresh your board pack. There's been some changes. Um, once you've refreshed it, those changes will become apparent and they'll be able to link straight through it and, and see where they're up to to make sure that, that they've got the most current and up-to-date version of the document itself. And once again, we're creating only one document and everybody has the same copy. Great, thanks. So that process is represented here. I'm just going to check for any updates and I can see that there's updates available. Click on my circular arrow, check the history. I can see changes to Italy and Hong Kong and it takes me straight to that page where, where, my, where my new document is. Thanks Patrick. Got a few more questions here. Um, questions come in around the length of board papers. Is it is there is it unlimited or is it restricted? 
No, look, we work with a variety of organisations, all of who have board papers in, in different kind of formats and different lengths. Um, the amount of data that you store within Diligent is completely unrestricted. So if we have a look here in the director's site, I'm going to click in here and have a look at the resources centre. Now this is an area where it's particularly useful for, for organisations to provide documentation for the board that they are constantly sending out. Quite often the constitution or a glossary of terms will be included in every single um, board pack. What you can do within Diligent is provide them with all the policies and procedures, the constitution, everything and anything the board might need to go about preparing for the meeting in one place, really well laid out. You can select how you want these folders to be organised and that way the board of directors have them at their fingertips at any given time. If you needed to add those to a board pack, simply what you would do is come in here, create a hyperlink to the board to, to one of those documents. I've got a policy update here and that has taken me to the code of ethics. So I've updated a policy. I want to keep the board abreast of it, provide them with that hyperlink and then they can link straight back to their board pack from that part of the document itself. So the amount of data that you can keep in one board pack or in the, in the environment itself is completely uncapped. Thanks Patrick. And the other question um, is actually in line with the resource centre that you just showed. Is can you put links through the resource centre? Yeah, and look, you can actually provide links to any part of Diligence. So you might want to provide a link to the calendar um, or archive material. Your archive is there. You can dictate whether you want to have a clean archive available to the board so it's purged of all the notes or it retains an individual's director's notes. Um, uh, from a governance perspective, that's up to your organisation to choose and we'll help you build your environment thusly. Um, Another useful tool is the search function. You can search throughout any area of Diligent, no matter what the formatting of the, of the document that was provided to, to the board was. If they're looking for press articles from uh, back uh, in previous years, they can look into those. Um, if it was in Word, Excel, PDF, however it was prepared, you can provide them with, with, with the search functionality to go about researching and preparing for the meeting in a really um, organised and, and, and simple fashion. Thanks, Patrick. Um, that's all the questions that I've got so far. Was there anything else you wanted to cover? Just Look, I really just wanted to um, give everyone a bit of a heads up. Obviously, we've really focused on the building of this, this pack today, um, but we will in our upcoming uh, sessions be really focusing a little bit more on, on providing the board with a refreshed um, environment to, to prepare for their meetings, and that will focus on the functionality um, from a board's perspective of everything and anything that they can do within this site. So this is what the board get, this is how they'll go about um, uh, actioning circular resolutions, all of those sort of, sort of tools and functionality are what we're going to cover um, next time round. Um, obviously we're trying to fit a lot into 30 minutes today and uh, hopefully um, you've all been able to get a bit of a gist of, of a bit of a taste of what's possible. Um, and uh, I, the other thing I'd stress is, you know, we're, we're happy to run demonstrations for you all one-on-one, -on -one, so please re reach out to us and we can cover any questions or particular areas of interest that you might have more specifically um, via, via a demonstration for, for yourselves and your fellow administration or, or company secretariat teams. Thanks, Patrick. So um, we will be closing out now. So Patrick will bring up some details about, so if you want to get in contact with either myself or Patrick. Um, these will come up on the screen shortly. Um, so just thanks Patrick for sharing your insights and before we close we will be sending out the recording to everybody and as mentioned um, by Patrick we will have our next webinar and um, it's coming up on Tuesday the 13th of September and we'll be looking at ways to spring clean the board and show you new functionalities uh, within the platform you've seen today. So if you'd like to download any further white papers, case studies, um, please do visit our website. Um, and as Patrick mentioned earlier, you can um, reach out for one-on-one demonstration anytime. Thanks very much for taking your time out of your day to be with us. Thank you.